Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. Today's show features the amazing Chris Rael, who speaks on cosmic frequency and multidimensional guidance. Dare to Dream podcast won the COV award, COVR award for best radio and podcast show. It is listed in Welp magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. It is also a top self-improvement podcast on Apple Podcast, nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and for a Webby Award. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. If you would like to take one of their classes anywhere in the world or become a facilitator, go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R dot com and join up. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I'm a media visibility expert. I'm also a book writing coach. I've got a class that is live on Zoom twice a month. You can join from anywhere in the world and take your book from idea to published and somewhere in between, make it a fabulous page turner book. I also take books to a guaranteed international best selling status. And finally, I teach spiritual messengers how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. Additionally, I run a boutique Hmm. I, I really haven't given it a name because over the years, people have come to me and said, will you represent me as a publicist? And I became a yes after a lot of resistance. So I do have six amazing clients that I represent names you would know in this field. And it's a joy to get them out there. So I really know what I'm talking about. This is my wheelhouse, this media visibility. And right now, for those of us who are light workers, it's our time. I don't care if you're shy. I don't care if you don't know how. I don't care if you're on the fence, but your heart says, I really should do this. You really should do this. It's why you came here. You didn't come here to let your light be under a bushel, as they say. You came here to shine and sing your song out loud. And it's okay if you don't know how, let me teach you. I've got a gift for you. It's got templates. It's got videos and how-tos so you can be visible in your business, in your being, and with your message. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H. I-N-G-E-R dot com slash gift. So happy to work with you and hopefully see you out there too. My guest today is Chris Rael, a renowned spiritual specialist and trusted guide of ether physics, known for his ability to demystify complex subjects like gravity, the ether, teleportation, and the intricate nature of time. In the role of a cosmic guide and spiritual specialist, Chris serves as a beacon of enlightenment, helping individuals reconnect with their true spiritual essence and offering profound insights into the vast realm of cosmology, including interstellar communication and methods to transcend the confines of 3D Earth existence. Chris provides guidance for those in the path to becoming interstellar citizens and assists in the harmonious alignment of businesses as spiritual entities, all while emphasizing the significance of living in accordance with divine principles of God's law. Beyond his expertise, Chris also officiates ordainment and wedding ceremonies, offers spiritual mentorship, and empowers individuals to take charge of their lives in synchronization with their inner source. To learn more about him and all his services, go to republicofeternalnations.org. And with that, I welcome the amazing Chris to Dare to Dream. It's so great to have you. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you for everything that you've done for people, for humanity. Yeah, for all who's involved with your work. I'm excited to be here and ready to dive in. I am so excited to dive in with you. and. Then I read your bio and it's like, oh boy, there's so many pieces in there alone. Uh, that could be all your talking points. Yeah. And I definitely, there's one in particular I really want to get to that is um, 
fascination for me right now. I really want to start with getting to know you better. And mm. were you always K R Y S Ra L? Always spiritual, always seeing. Was that always your name? Hmm. Are are any of us our names? Have, we, have any of us ever really been our names? That's the question. But to answer your question, um, no, I was born with the C H R I S. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, just growing up, uh, I've always had multidimensional experiences with all kinds of beings, shadow beings, star beings, ghosts, um, you know, all kinds of different energies, people showing up in my life who would hand me a physical object and I turn around and they'd be gone. So this has been something that's followed me ever since I was like, you know, very, very young. Um, so with that said, I quickly realized that the world that I was shown or taught or born into was not the world that I was from or was used mm -hmm. to. So the name I was given is, and those of those of you who know me through the, the law fields, that birth name is a name for the matrix, is a name for the system. So K-R-Y-S is my own uh, reclamation of, of what I truly am as a soul, as a, as a being of, um, you know, of harmony. So yeah, that's the short version. That is super cool. I love that. And do you, so when you say that you would be given an object and mm -hmm. then that object would be God, is that the Mandela effect or was that they took the object back and they were not from here? The the latter, um, but they left the object. So there's been a couple of times, um, that's just one of, you know, just like five I can think of where like this specific in incidents, I was in a church, I was raised Christian um, back in the day, and a woman tapped me on the shoulder, and she didn't speak, there was thousands of people in this, it was one of those huge like Pentecostal churches, and she holds out her hand like this, and I open my hand, and she drops kind of that um, Vesca Pisces, Fishers of Men symbol, like from the, from like Jesus and all that, she drops it in my hand, and then I go to show my mother, and I say, look what this lady gave me, and she goes, what lady? And I turn and the lady's gone. So that happened early on. Um, I've had people, like I, I, I was on the side of the road one time and uh, this gentleman at like 12 o'clock at night stops because my tire was flat and he directed me down the road to this random house or this random place that I never knew existed. When I asked him um, where he, you know, why he was doing this and where he was from, he said, I was, he said, I've been here for a very long time. Just kind of drove off. So I've had helpers the whole way through. <laughs> it sounds like it. That's really very lovely. It sounds like you're protected as well. Yeah. And um, different animal, but I will say uh, my name isn't my born name either. <laughs> mm, mm, Even though it's a way more common name or common-ish spelling, mm. but I was born Deborah. D-E-B-O-R-A-H. Mm. And I was born after the prophet, the judge, the, le the leader of the Israelites from the Bible, um, mm. the Jewish Bible. And um, my mother purposely chose a prophetess name. She wanted me to be powerful. And wow. it, it's beautiful. And at the same time, I will say, I had this weird feeling as a kid, like it was a big name. Like it's a mm -hmm. lot to mm -hmm. say. And I, I know in my time growing up, everybody was D-E-B-B-Y or D-E-B-B-I-E. Right. And there was this thing in me that always had a claim autonomy, somehow had to be me. Right. Even as a young kid, and I renamed myself. Yes. That nickname, D-E-B-B-I, insisted on it as a little yes. kid. And to yes. this day, like when people email me or text me and they mess up my name and the spelling, it... <laughs> I don't like it because it doesn't hold my vibration right it's and it's, that's what it is it's all about the frequency and i would say the ether and how the ether um how we all come from the ether right we're all these energetic vortices you know we're all a white hole but also a black hole it's one total field that we truly are so whenever we come into this realm and we're given a name that's not our name that's someone else's interpretation of us right it's really their idea, but we are our own ideas, our own um, thoughts, if you will. We're just we're just a big thought. And so um, whenever you you rename yourself, it's interesting because what happens is you're actually listening to 
the true you. You're not listening to the external world and you know what they're saying you are or not. So you gain that autonomy. Um, and it's funny because my name, K-R-Y-S, Chris or Crystal, right? As you would say. Yeah. But also the name Chris in general is bearer of Christ or carrier of Christ. Wow. Right? And wow. so that's a big responsibility. But when you understand what uh, Christ frequency truly is and how it relates to the ether and your perception of reality, I'm, I'm doing what I'm here to do, right? So it all makes sense. Right on. Um, my name definitely does not translate to Magdalene of Mary. <laughs> Although I wish it did, because that would be it's cool. <laughs> yeah. But I will good. say that every time someone does my numerology or anything mm -hmm. to do with adding up and crunching names, they're like, don't change it. You mm -hmm. gave yourself the perfect name for exactly. who you are and what you came here for. So yes, exactly. there are some people I believe whose parents get a download, like the baby, the soul speaks and says, name me this. And mm -hmm. it's so beautiful. And there are many of us who go out in the world and there's this oddity and it's like, mm, we need to realign mm -hmm. ourselves mm -hmm. back to what our true vibration is. Exactly. So yeah, so here you are, you graduated university with a BA in history, with a minor in education. And you spend time playing college football. Yeah. Amazing. So how does all that background contribute to who you are today, who you've become, what you're doing? It just provided a platform for me to be able to relate to this realm, to this world. Hmm. Uh, I've met a lot of professional athletes, a lot of professional coaches and people who are retired from the NFL or still are in the NFL. Right. I, I grew up in Pittsburgh. I played at Pitt before I transferred to, to UMass. So um, I got to meet a lot of those guys, Troy Palomalu, Ben Roethlisberger, all those um, gentlemen back in the day. But that experience showed me that there is something really intricate about being human, that being human is, is really um, important for a soul. It's, it's important for a soul's development. And so as I was going through college, I went through a ton of wild things you know not not just spiritually but also physically with my family um you know realizing different things about my past as a child and my parents my adopted parents and so it really helped me get a boots on the ground perspective of what a difficult life would be so that so that I can relate to others right so um besides that College football was amazing. A lot of people don't even know. So this is going to be news for a lot of people. <laughs> it's going to be funny. Like, wait, you played it? Oh, yes, yes, I did. So, are you tall? Um, no, I'm I'm, I'm like five nine average. Yeah, five nine, five ten ish, whatever, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and okay, so at least in this form. At least in this form. In this form, yeah, amazing. Okay, so. Uh, you talk about this frequency integrity. Um, mm -hmm. So how, talk about frequency integrity. How do we take responsibility for our mind? A mind is a fascinating thing. I love, in a way, my mind. I love it. Like, I have the most curious mind. I don't think I could do this job if I wasn't fascinated by people and particular subjects, you know? Right. Um, so I love it for that. But it's also a pain in the ass because it's mm -hmm. like, sometimes it's like, it's so much minutia. So right. how can we take responsibility for this and how can we better understand frequency integrity? So the first thing is it goes back to the name. It goes back to who you think you are mm -hmm. and what you are. So most people, the reason they have that mind chatter, the reason they have all of that running around, they can't seem to control it is because they're still operating from the framework of I'm this individual called so-and-so, right? And so you create this separation between you and the world. Um, I love superhero movies. Um, the Man of Steel movie, whenever Clark was in the closet, he was hearing all these, at school he was in the closet, he was hearing all these noises and you know, he was super overwhelmed by all the sights and he could just feel everything right? And he starts crying. His mother walks in and, and she says, what's, you know, what's the matter? And he says, I can just feel everything or something to that effect. And she goes, only focus on what you want to hear. 
right? So frequency integrity is really about knowing your specific self, not the self that was given a name at birth or that works a job or that does this special thing. But what I coach people on is how to let go of it all to see what's left. Because when you find what's left, you realize it's always been there. And a lot of people are searching for an identity. Am I an Arcturian starseed? Am I, am I a Pleiadian starseed? You know, where am I from? Who, where's my family? And what I want people to remember is that we're, we're all of it. And so the self that we're really talking about is the, is the cosmic self, the eternal or internal intelligence we all are. So to tune into that specific frequency, you have to let go of the distractions and the things that are keeping you away from the true self. And this goes not just for, you know, in the 3D matrix, but also in the spiritual community as well. As well. I tell people all the time, don't listen to what I'm saying, hear and feel what I'm saying, but then let it go and see if it still resonates, if it's still there. A lot of people like to outsource their spirituality right? This happens a lot in the UFO community. It happens a lot in the spiritual community, the religious. We like to, humans like to outsource their power. And that builds distraction because now you're thinking of what he said, what they said, what what I said, what Debbie said. That's handy on one level of the journey, but you got to get to a point where zero point becomes your natural way of functioning, where you can sit and let it all go and still feel full and whole inside enough to do what you gotta do. And then whenever someone else brings another topic of discussion up to you, you don't latch on and lose yourself in it, (laughs) you know? You're able to look at it and observe it and just see if this, does it make sense for me to be studying this? Does it have any value in my life now? Or is this just something that's clouding my, um, my awareness? So you got to know yourself on the deepest levels and letting go of all the things you think you've thought you've known. Think you've thought you've known. That's an interesting line. <laughs> all the things you think you thought you'd know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I like that it keeps coming back to this self, but self. It's a different self. Unsep- yes. Unseparated yeah. part of the cosmos, part of the all. Right. And, and then regarding our our soul, Mm -hmm. our DNA, our genes, our mind control, all of it. What are the deeper truths? What are the misconceptions about humans? Mm. Um, Yeah. Talk about that. The biggest misconception, one of the biggest misconceptions is that um, we have a soul. And if you hear that word or that phrase, we have a soul. So who's the we, who's the I that has a soul? No, you're still, you're still operating from a uh, egotistical, not bad, but just an ego identity perception. You are the soul. You are the soul who is um, projecting its consciousness through a body, through different layers of um, f- uh, multidimensional physics, I call it ether physics, to have a perceived experience. So... It's like this, Um, I'm gonna get to the bigger part of the question. If you think of like a body of water and then one part of that body of water, let's say it's it's two foot by two foot, right? Two by two, it it starts to raise up, right? Now, all the rest of the body of water is still flat, but that two foot by two foot starts to raise up. Well, one might view that as something separate than the rest of the water, but it's not, it's the same. So the soul is the same as the ether. It's, it's, it's the same, sorry, my cat's going, <laughs> it's the same as um, the body of water. The ether can be akin to, um, the ether can be akin to like this invisible substance that surrounds and uh, sustains all things, right? I call it liquid light, ether. And whenever you can understand that, you can then start to understand that nothing is separate. Then you understand that nothing actually manipulated the DNA. So the second biggest myth is that other beings have manipulated our DNA and that humans are just kind of down and out. There's nothing we can do about it. But that's not how DNA works because DNA was not constructed in a lab. 
DNA is a byproduct of the ether. DNA is living memory. Okay, so DNA is constructed by a soul who has experiences that then turn into what I call ether pulse rhythms, which is just repeating pattern in the ether that creates a standing wave. And then that becomes crystallized as a memory bank for the soul to kind of pull from anytime it wants. That's why some people can remember past lives. It's not a past life. You're pulling information from yourself about experiences that you've had and that you're currently having because time is not linear by any means, right? So I don't hold that the Anunnaki did anything to us physically. I think what has happened is, or I know what's happened is that mind control is used to shift people's DNA. What do I mean by that? Yeah, what do you mean by that? It's like this. What I just said is DNA is stored memory. Mm -hmm. Okay, You can change DNA through perception. I wanted to ask you about that. Okay. Yeah, you can change DNA through perception because the more that you think about something, the more you focus on something, the more that it solidifies, it becomes a memory. It right, becomes, or, or a belief. Or a belief, right? So you can't like take a piece of my skin and say, hey, that's my DNA. And you know, that like, no, you're seeing a very small percentage of a consciousness just from what modern science on earth can perceive. But modern science on earth is, does not have the technology to perceive much of what, it, much of anything else other than what it wants people to believe, right? So going back to perception, if I tell you, Debbie, that this shirt is pink over and over, I make videos about this shirt being pink. I um, draw pictures of, of this shirt and I put the word pink next to it. That's going to be part of your codex. That's going to become part of your memory. It's going to be, it's going to become part of your DNA, right? So mm -hmm. then you will continue to think that this is pink, mm -hmm. right? So what has happened to humanity is that mind control has been placed on a massive scale to make us, to make humans feel as though they're limited by an external being, that some external being came and messed with the telomeres. There's so much to say. <laughs> so the do you think this mind yeah. control, is this from an extraterrestrial civilization? Is it from our government? Is it mm -hmm. from the uh, Illuminati? Is it from, where does this stem from? It stems from first the people of Earth holding a specific vibration, a specific Which thought form. So first, first humans hold a specific thought form. Then they start to project that thought form. Okay. And current age, that thought form would be considered the Illuminati or the Cabal. But really, those are egregors of out of, of humanity's consciousness. So people have taken responsibility for their thoughts. They're creating the problem. Second, once that problem is created, yes, it becomes real. And then it seems like they are infiltrating our society as an external race, but it's only because the people of humanity of, of, of earth are in resonance with that frequency. You only experience what you are in resonance with. So is there Illuminati? Is there a, um, extraterrestrials who are who are supposedly messing with us on one level yes on another level no it, it depends on which on what perception you're viewing it from but as a blanket statement humans have been manipulated by this species and that's it no it's not that simple it's way more complex way more in depth than that yeah i'm totally tracking with you and so if that is true mm -hmm then if there are people out there who don't buy into the collective or mm -hmm. there are other collectives, right? There are other frequencies and thoughts. Then yes. there are also people living on an earth in a timeline, in a dimension where that doesn't exist, where they're not victims, oh. right? Bingo. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. And that's it right there. Yeah. And I want to ask you also, cause I love, I love all of this so much that the, um, 
the DNA part, I feel like this is so important. Yeah, it's deep. <laughs> it is deep and it is, but it's life-changing if one can fathom it mm -hmm. and then utilize it, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So um, I want to use an example of somebody who's sick. Um, mm -hmm. What kind of example? So let's just say for the hell of it, somebody has arthritis and inflammation. That's a totally sucky I think That's it's an right. autoimmune disease, but it's totally sucky. It's very painful in the joints and the bones and people have replacements and all sorts of stuff happens. And someone's saying, did that happen to your mom? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The hip, the knee. Someone's saying, oh, well, yeah, you have this arthritis and inflammation in your body. Oh, you have it in your hands. Oh, et cetera. Okay. Boom. Right. That's pretty powerful for a mind to conceive of, then you look at MRIs and you look at yeah. x-rays and it's like, oh. Programming, mind control. Programming is powerful, man. And it. so it could be, well, that's my genes. That's my I DNA. Know. That's a lot of the draw. I, you got cancer. My family mm -hmm. is arthritis. So let's just say that's the example. Mm -hmm. And now let's use what you're talking about, Chris, that we don't have to be programmed. It doesn't have to be true. And DNA is malleable. It is choice, Very much. basically. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if that is true, and if you were working with somebody who came to you with this issue, for mm -hmm. example, what would you do? How would you have them reprogram their DNA so that in fact, their body could completely present differently and present arthritis free inflammation free bones and joints perfect lubricated everything working strong free so first people have to understand and comprehend what they are that that's that keep going back to that because it's so important okay. you are not a body the, you, your body is a holographic projection of you which is a soul which is just a uh aspect of the ether of the source of god right because if if someone's if someone's base belief is that they're a human being in a body that then there's a lot of work to be done so first i would help them to comprehend the truth of who and what they truly are because just even that in and of itself if you really feel and this is what so many people have um skipped over when the spirit in the spiritual journey is like we all talk about God, we all talk about the source, but we always separate ourselves. The universe is gonna do this for me. You know, I'm grateful because no, you are the power that has done anything, everything for you. You are only speaking from a limited perspective as this is me here and the universe is somewhere over there. That's not how it goes. You are the universe. You are the source, right? I would take them through a series of energetic practices that are very simple where they can start to feel in 30 seconds this etheric um, energy around and within them the second someone feels that their mind has no choice but to expand even if even if it's for a fraction of a moment once that expansion happens now it starts to erode the thought patterns that are in alignment with you know the the arthritis the this the that because now you have, you have offered a different set of ideas, right? And you, you have to get people to see that everything is frequency and harmony and harmonics. Once you can see it's frequency and harmonics, which are really just your thoughts and ideas, you can, you can help guide them to perceive themselves in a different way. Right, because arthritis sits at a, at a specific ether pulse rhythm, it has a specific pattern, and I'm sure it's linked to something that happened whenever they were, you know, a couple of years back. They tripped or something. They just never dealt with the energy, right? It's all frequency management. It's all it is. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say about that is, if we are the ether, if we are the source, if we are God, that means there's no limit. That means the second I sit and I focus my energy and I just use my imagination to perceive what it would be like to not have arthritis, I become that. So we, we go out of just the feeling. I know Dr. Joe Dispenza does a great job talking about feeling and, and being in that energy, but taking it a step further, 
it's not about the feeling only it's about being it you are it because you are you are it i am the the part of source who does not have arthritis because i choose to be right then you take physical actions to support that belief system and that new idea you got to change your idea your perception and um how you think it's all internal have you done it chris have you had a situation that was untenable to you and not preferred mm -hmm. and said i'm going to use what i know and what i teach could you talk yeah. about that and give an example yeah so i don't i do not talk or teach <laughs> on things that i haven't experienced or done myself because that just doesn't make sense i think what makes my work so important and valuable is that it is all self-sourced and then uh, experienced from within, right? I, I go here first and then I look at the books and stuff. So I used to get migraines all the time. And oh. um, whenever, I, just recently, especially whenever I, a movie theater popcorn, very interesting. Um, <laughs> you know, if I get a migraine, the first thing I'll do is I will sit and I will focus on the migraine, just giving it attention, just recognizing, okay, Hey, what's up? You're here. I talked to it, right? I might say something like, "All right, so um, thank you, but you, you know, you're no longer welcome here. I'm gonna shift. We're gonna shift this now." And so, yeah, from there, it's just a lot of what some would say, like shama, uh, shamanic meditations, just really going within and shifting my mindset and feeling what it would be like to not have um, that that element. And it's easier said than done, but it's also easy once you understand what you truly are. Because I've, I've broadened my consciousness to view myself in different ways. I, I know I'm not just this. So now I have access to my um, extraterrestrial self. I have mm -hmm. access to my native, I have access to different parts of my being who don't have those elements, you know? Hmm. Wow, that's very interesting. Yeah. I never thought about that, like in current lifetimes. Um, of course. aspects yeah. and projections of ourselves living things out like completely not congruent with an ailment or a situation happening right. here right yeah that's a very cool perspective I yeah. like that yeah we have to change who we think we are this is this is what interstellar living is really about it's about I know I'm kind of segueing into the ET talk but um cool. it's not about reaching you know, extraterrestrials are great. I love my ET homies and they've helped out tremendously. But at this point in time, they're just people, you know, and the mm -hmm. only difference between humanity and an advanced civilization is the mindset. I don't even like to call them ETs anymore. I'd rather call them extra perceptionals because they're people who have generated and experienced other perceptions, higher perceptions of reality, different perceptions of reality. And now their sciences and technologies are built from those perceptions, ideas, and thoughts they hold. How do you interact with them? Do you interact with them in a dream state or a lucid state? Uh, mm -mm. Meditation, dream, and telepathy. I'm outside almost every night um, under the stars. Thanks, Dr. Greer, for yeah. <laughs> getting many of us started on that journey. But I'm definitely taking a step further and realizing that true contact um, is not linear. Um, I'm sure I've met some of them in the physical without knowing it because they're people. Um, and man, there's so much I want to say about that, that specific part about meeting them because they can show up here as a human being. And what they've done to me a lot is something will happen in my life. It'll shift my whole entire life, but it's such a small thing. And they do this to help people stay on track because there's a cosmic order to things and some of us are here to help bring forth something to help things move along right and so your star homies may show up in a physical form and maybe you're uh, late for work and you're like how could this be why am I late for work it's like you being late that 30 seconds provided that shift in your reality where now you'll be on this different track this different experience so yeah so you've mentioned the word ether physics, and you've alluded some to what it is, but can you give an explanation of what that is? It is the study of the unseen realms. 
it's the study of source or consciousness itself, the study of utilizing the etheric nature to benefit yourself and those around you. So I've studied time. I've studied, um, yes, teleportation. Um, um, what's the other thing? Oh, like levitation, bilocation, all, all of those things relate to the ether because when you understand what the ether is, again, that um, superluminal space of zero point energy that is present at all times and accessible and malleable, you start to have fun. You start to figure things out, right? So um, <clears throat> my studies with time have led me to the point of realizing that if, if the ether is this eternal substance that everything is constructed of, well, then there's no such thing as moving from point A to point B. There's no such thing as moving from, uh, you know, I'm driving here, I'm going there. There's, there's no linearity. You start to see reality as a set of picture frames, where at a one point you're at one frequency, you have a thought and you're at a different frequency, a thought, you have, a, you have another frequency, all generating this seemingly perception of linear events, right? But it's not, they're happening simultaneously in the field, in the etheric realm of pure potential. So as you focus your energy, right? So going back to other versions of yourself, as you focus your energy on being the being who knows how to uh, teleport, you're actually, you actually become that being. You download in the information from there because you have activated that specific etheric pulse rhythm, that specific pattern in the ether that has that information. Information is just organized consciousness. That's all it is, right? And so ether physics is the study of, you know, bringing consciousness and then unseen realms into the scene. So that it's, so, so that's more tangible, more malleable, and you can have a little bit more control over your life and advance on your journey. Yeah. <clears throat> and earlier you alluded to having read something that when you're gaining information, you, you have read. And so are these Sumerian tablets is, and tell me about that. What did you learn reading the tablets, um, this new age Bible? What is it that you gained from that? So um, before I ruffle some feathers, um, <laughs> I'll just say, this is my experience, right? It's, it's one consciousness's experience. And it doesn't have to be the same for everyone. Um, what I like to do is offer invitation for people to look at things a little bit deeper than, than, than what we're told. Always experience things for yourself. It doesn't matter how big the person, the event is, always be within your own etheric pulse rhythm. Know yourself. Jiddu Krishnamurti always used to say, you know, the mind must be aware of its own program. So you have to be aware of what's going on within your own field first. Secondly, the Sumerian tablets, I call them the New Age Bible because when you read them, there's a lot of similarities to the Bible. In fact, a lot of the um, consciousnesses who constructed the Bible use the same formula to construct the tablets. Um, now, you have to think of this from an advancing species point of view, right? The name of the game is becoming self-autonomous, is realizing you are the source. So there's going to be a lot of hurdles for you to get over until you truly land within your own self, climb your own mountain, ascend within yourself, come back down and share what you've learned, right? So one of those hurdles is the spiritual context in which we find that some other beings that some call the Anunnaki manipulated society, uh, and there's a good one and there's a bad one. There's an Inki and there's, a, there's an Enlil. If you, if you research a little bit further, um, they're talking about a group of people. They're not talking about one being. They're, the, the two groups of people they're talking about, the groups of people, one who was in alignment with the original source code, another who was in alignment with the Septuagint or man-made law, right? 
these factions of people were called Inki and Enlil. Okay, so the Bible itself, I'm going to bridge them here. The Bible itself was constructed by a general, general named Nero, his son Flavius, and another um, commander named Titus, right? Nero ordered uh, those three generals or two generals to go to different cultures who were practicing self-autonomy and alignment with the original source to take down those societies, infiltrate them from the inside out and give them their version of God, of source, whatever. Why would you do that? So you have control over the people, all right? So the Bible stories were constructed to, create, to give the people what they wanted. The people, the people of the uh, Palestinian times wanted a savior. They wanted a God. They wanted a, uh, um, someone to come in and kind of give them love and light and peace. So they created a Jesus figure who represented that love, light, and harmony that the people wanted. So as long as the people were in alignment with that Jesus energy or that uh, figure that the, that the um, generals constructed, the generals in the Roman Empire had control over the people's consciousness, their perception, right? Again, perception control. New Age Bible, Sumerian tablets, Enki and Enlil, right? The extraterrestrials who came to Earth, <laughs> who enslaved Earth, who created a slave race out of Earth, it's, it's, that's not how it goes. Humans have always been a part of God, a part of the source. They're not something separate. It's like saying, well, where did the first tree come from? It, uh, tr trees are just here. Humans, Lyrans are the original humans, were always around. So these stories, whether it's the Bible, whether it's Sumerian tablets, are designed to keep people away from themselves, away, ultimately away from their own inner God, inner source, the source, in my opinion, you know, take it or leave it. Either way, it's all good to me. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> and when you bring up uh, the Lyrans, mm -hmm. I am that mm -hmm. original mm -hmm. Elohim and then Lyran and mm -hmm. I, I don't know. This is a really interesting construct to be a part of. It's a huge it's soul choice to agree to come here in particular. I mean, my people were massively full of love and creation, and mm -hmm. I still am that. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's a really sensitive soul. And so on the one hand, like my life is so amazing and I'm, I feel super blessed and mm -hmm powerful and creations and mm -hmm. there's so much to enjoy on the other hand i think on a heart level it can be dense for me right mm -hmm. i feel a little bit like when the lyrans had a deal with the dracos because they were so innocent uh mm -hmm. not knowing um really what was going on and thinking they were making friends and then uh they were really there to take them yeah. and their planet down so yeah like how do you um what are your thoughts on that? Uh, for yeah. we're all star seeds. Thank we you. are all right. Nobody yeah. is an earthling. There is no such thing. We're all a composite right. of so much, and we have also very particular strains that influence who mm -hmm. we are, and we can relate to because of mostly where we spent a lot of incarnations or parallel right. lives. So right. I I totally get that, and I love that actually because then we really are not separated. We truly are all one yeah and to come here and have the broad shoulders we have what are your thoughts on that how we never navig navigate this really interesting construct yeah. called earth called humanity I mean, earth is beautiful it's humanity yeah. that's <laughs> kind yeah. of wonky at times yeah humanity can be really interesting and um like i said earlier the, the name of the game is really finding yourself it's it's really getting back to center getting back to to zero because that you know, if you're nothing, you're all things, right? You're pure potential. That's what nothing is. The nothing is pure potential. What's pure potential? It's not having any confines, right? Starting from there. So once you're at, at that space, yeah, I think the Earth realm <clears throat> is very. It's a stepping stone for a lot of souls who come here, 
you know, not just for the experience, but to prepare for, for what they're doing in the higher realms. You know, some of us come here preparing for um, taking on more responsibilities as cosmic ambassadors who are still, who mm. still have consciousness, uh, you know, in the Pleiades, you know, in the, the you know, Lyran star systems, wherever, there's so many, wherever we are. So I don't think Earth in and of itself is a negative place. I think that Earth is a conglomeration of views and ideas, and it's a game. The ultimate controllers of this realm <clears throat> are essentially us at the end of the day, right? And so for, for star seeds out there, people who really resonate with like, I'm different, I'm not from here, I've had these experiences, you know, like I said earlier, it's not so much about like getting out there and like becoming the next big leader. It's really about being you and simply choosing to be kind to yourself and others and share the medicine that you have. And if that medicine is like picking up groceries for your grandma, then like do that with all your heart, you know? Um, at the same time, some of us are called into action in, in, in different ways that do require more responsibility. So you can't make the earth realm, you can't make the system your enemy. You have to integrate it. You can't fight things because what you fight fights you. You have to see deeper to the purpose as to why it's there. I went through a legal battle long, a couple of years ago where I was tasered because I didn't wear a mask. And, um, you know, I went in and out of court for a long time, you know, sharing with them all my paperwork, a bunch of stuff. This is why I teach spiritual law nowadays. And, but I was fighting the system. I was trying to prove to them that I was, you know, who I said I was, I was this, you know, coming at it from this very, um, <clears throat> I need to prove myself position. One day I stopped. I said, I'm not preparing anything. I'm going in. I know the remedy is within me. And long story short, um, so the prosecutor says, hey, we have a deal for you. If you pay $150, we'll drop all the charges, you know, because I, I was charged with trespassing because it was a mess, not wearing a mask. It was, it was crazy. And so the case went away, charges were dropped, but not until I changed myself and I stopped fighting the system. So those of you who feel different, it's okay. You don't have to fight it. You just have to be yourself. This is a place where souls come to learn how to navigate the ether. That's what it's for. Oh my God, Chris. Uh, so first of all, yesterday, I'm working on this huge project right now, and I'm connecting with mostly with channelers of extraterrestrials, names y'all would know. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I was in conversation with the amazing Vita Kulhoff. Vita mm -hmm. Kulhoff from Amsterdam, and she channels Arjun. And mm -hmm. Arjun made this statement that is, your story reminds me of, where he said, he's a Yahyel, and he said, insistence is resistance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Insistence is resistance. Now, I never heard that before, but yeah. I thought that was simple and powerful. Yeah. And I got to ask you, because that's really hard to hear that you just on a humanity level that you got tasered for like how crazy yeah, yeah it's been did this world great. get during covid <laughs> i assume yeah <laughs> when all the mandates were going on yeah what the heck yeah yeah and 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 like like i said the I could sit here and I could be the victim of it or I could learn from it, right? And I could realize why did I, why did I go through that situation? Why did I, why was I in resonance with something like that? Because there's no accents. There's no such thing as like, you know, the draconian. What did you learn from that? Please tell me, what did yeah. you learn? I learned that I am the creator. And I learned that there's a difference between spiritual law and, and uh, man-made law, that there is public and private ways to operate in this realm. I learned so much. So now I teach people how to set up their spiritual businesses through a PMA or through a temple where they have their own jurisdiction, where they're creating their own templates, their own organizations without the influence of third parties. So, yeah. Yeah, very powerful. And the other thing I wanna uh, make note of that you said was how beautiful. And I love that you have some shamanic references because that is mm -hmm. deep for me. One of the things I say to remind myself 
is I am the medicine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am the medicine. So, you know, we always feel the medicine is out there and we really are. And I love how you preface that or couch that by saying it can be a kindness. It could be a getting um, groceries, like what's at your disposal to be the medicine for yourself, for somebody else to change the vibration, the life. This is small and huge stuff all at Mm -hmm. once. Yes. Yes, it is. That's, that's well said. And, and so does that behavior lead into ascension what what is ascension for you? What is your viewpoint on it? It does because you, ascension or transcendence. I'd rather prefer. To, I'd rather call it transcendence because ascending denotes linearity. You know, mm-hmm. I don't like to think in terms of linear because again, there's no reality is not linear. So where are you ascending to? There's, you're going to float up into the sky, into the clouds. <laughs> you could, <laughs> but like you're not ascending anywhere. What people really mean, I feel, is that they're transcending limiting thought forms, beliefs, and ideas. We're transcending the the part of our consciousness that is outsourcing its intelligence. And we're we're, we're maturing as a soul. Hmm. Souls are grown. A soul isn't just like, you're, you're just, you know, a soul is developed over time. That's why we have these experiences over eons. We develop a soul as we go along so transcendence some would say ascendance is the letting go of those thoughts that make us feel like i'm just this small human being it's also figuring out and realizing ether physics learning how reality actually works your mind is an ether resonator your thoughts are gravitic in nature whenever you think and you focus on a thought you're creating a, a, a vortex, a gravitational field in the ether. That is how you create your reality. Dan Winter would call that, um, uh, what do you call it? Compression, some super fancy word. But uh, he has a super fancy word for that, where you focus, like my folks with 10 seconds on my cat. You know, it, my cat will probably come walking into the room because you've created that frequency resonance bandwidth for you to have that experience. So you have to know how to, how to work with yourself in that way, right? So you're the creator at the end of the day. That, that's really what all this comes down to. And so if, you, if you're ascending, um, <clears throat> I would say to look deeper than just the seven chakras, please look into how you operate, right? There's so many different ways in which you can interface with reality. That's why I teach teleportation and things like this, because it's not as complicated as people think. Um, it's just a matter of understanding frequency and, um, yeah, frequency management. That's, that's really what it comes down to. How can we learn about teleportation? I like the sound of that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like driving a car. Well, it's, it's, a, it's first you have to, humanity itself has to get to a point where it accepts that kind of, uh, mode of existence. It has to change its general idea, right? So the only reason we don't experience things like, uh, teleportation is because, the masses believe that we can't do it. So that creates the reality that we can't do it. So I would need you, others in the community to actually sit. We would actually need to practice um, doing this. And if enough of us do this, it will happen because now it's become an accepted idea in society. Remember we talked about earlier, perception is everything. If you can get a group of people to perceive something, then they will create that reality. If you can get a group of people to perceive that they're aging because their telomeres are cut off, then they're going to age, right? If you can get them to believe and know that how they think is what they are, then they'll create that. So when it comes to uh, teleportation, everything is about matching um, different rhythms in the ether, okay? If I play 432 hertz here and I play 440 hertz here, and there's a little tennis ball in the middle, that ball is not gonna move because there's, there's dissonance, right? If I play 432 and 432, that little ping pong or tennis ball in the middle will start to vibrate because there's now resonance, right? So if I want to teleport to um, New Zealand, I must put my frequency there 
until I'm resonating, until I'm being there, until I am there. And over time with practice, the body will start to, um, I guess you could say dismantle. It would just disappear and then reappear somewhere else. Because all you're doing is creating a, a different node or a different nexus point in the ether. So, you know, my focus is here, so I'm here. My focus is outside, I'll be outside because that's where my focus is, right? Just activating different parts of the ether. Chris, isn't that actually what happens when we dream? So, <clears throat> you know, I know there's the one contention that says when we dream, it's really our subconscious and all parts of the dream are us. Oh, yes. Yep. But there's also the fact <clears throat> we time travel, we oh, dimension no. travel. So isn't it the same that we fall yes. asleep mm -hmm. and once we're in slumber that we, our particles go somewhere else? Mm -hmm or we're connecting with another lifetime dimension, et cetera. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Is that the same? <laughs> I love that. I love that you brought up dreams because dreams are, yeah, they're so fascinating. Yeah, so it's like you, you have a body, you have, you have an expression of yourself for each density, right? For each, for each frequency of consciousness, you have a body from the lowest to the highest, everything in between. So for this, what we call the 3D, we have this physical Lyran body. By the way, Lyrans aren't cats, they're humans. That's one another huge myth that people think Lyrans are cats. They're not. Cats are called Irmas, the cat people. Topic for another day. Oh! I know, <laughs> I know, so cool, right? So- Good um, tangent. Yeah, humans are the original Lyrans. Um, right. So in the dream space, you are, you're shifting your consciousness, you're shifting your focus point from the, from the 3D dimension to a different one. It doesn't matter. There's, there's no real number to dimensions. It's just, it's just um, different bandwidths of frequency, different rhythms, different patterns. So when you're dreaming, you're just in a different pattern than, than, than this one. You also don't have the linearity because in that different pattern, you're not held to the beliefs and the ideas of this physical pattern that we call physical earth. So things seem nonlinear there because in reality, in totality, they're not. The mm -hmm. only reason they seem linear here is because we have all agreed to it. That's it. The second that a million of us agree that we can do something amazing, it'll happen. Mm -hmm. Reality is super simple. It's just agreements and ideas and perceptions. I love that. Oh my yeah. goodness. So so you say that if we desire a different experience collectively mm -hmm. or even individually, but collectively, we need to change our frequency. So how do we get to the root of the issues? If we don't skip to different timelines, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how specifically do we create them? If we don't skip to different timelines, how do we create them? A yeah. Timeline, or, <clears throat> yeah. Let's just say, let's, I'm sorry, and I'll make it simple, but how do we utilize frequency? How do we get to the root of um, anything that's going on so we can unearth it, you know, take a look at it and say, mm, mm -hmm. not, not choosing that anymore. And how do we Move. relieve that of its duties in order yeah. to step into something way better collectively yeah. or individually? So I'll do my best to, to simplify this. <laughs> this is a big one. I have five fingers. This finger, the pinky, uh, the thumb, let's say they're at, they're on two different ends of the spectrum, but it's on the same hand. Mm -hmm. What's the one thing they have in common? That they're fingers? That they're fingers, but they're also all connected to the palm, right? They're all mm -hmm. connected, all connected. Okay. So you got to get to that, that, that zero point, again, that pure potential space, and then just start to create the experience in your mind of what you want to have. How do you create that? Well, Chris, how do you create that? One, what is frequency? You create it by changing your frequency. What's your frequency? Frequency is how frequent a specific energy uh, vibrates in the ether. It vibrates as frequent as you want, the more you focus on it. So the more you focus on something, the more it generates this, this rhythm over and over and over and over and over. So you begin to create that. You have to live you have to live in that creation. You can't live here. You have to basically ignore. Mm. This, sounds, this sounds counterintuitive. No, I get it. This is how reality works. 
Mm -hmm. Let me pause. If I um, want to uh, get a new car, let's make it very simple. My car broke down. I, I need a new car, right? I can sit there and I can focus on how am I going to get a new car? How much is it going to be? Where's it going to come from? Or recognize the truth, acceptance, right? So you accept what has happened. You accept what you've created. You take full responsibility. Okay, you're the creator. Anyone listening, watching this, from this point on, you're the creator. Mm -hmm. Whether you believe it, know it or not, it's up to you. But I'm telling you, I see you, you're the creator. Mm -hmm. So you take full responsibility, one. Then you choose to create a different etheric pulse rhythm by focusing your energy and living in the space where that thing is real because it is real. The only thing that is real is what you create. How do you create? You shift your thoughts. So you have to live in your mind. I'm living in the car I'm driving. I'm feeling myself driving the car. I'm being the driver. I'm looking up new cars, right? I'm just shifting my frequency. I feel lighter. I feel, it feels good to drive this new car. Oh my God, this car feels amazing. And your mind will start to actually create scenarios where it'll start to go on autopilot. And now you're just seeing yourself drive down the road in your new car. You're not, you're not consciously thinking of it, but your subconscious has accepted the program, accepted the reality, accepted um, where your consciousness is, consciousness is focused now. And sooner or later, here you go. Here comes the money and you get the new car ease, with ease. I love that. So when I go to sleep every night, this is how I fall asleep. I <laughs> First of all, I look like a football player when I go to sleep. I'm not kidding. Nah. I have to put earbuds in. Like I cannot yeah. have stimulation. I have to put earbuds in. Mm -hmm. I put the, the blinders on. I even have a thing. I have a mouth the whole, guard. You have the whole thing. The, whole, the gear. <laughs> the only thing I don't have is like shoulder pads. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything else is hilarious. Now you all know. So mm -hmm. I close my eyes. And the first thing, and this is true. The first thing I do is I go to zero point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I see it as no thing. Mm -hmm. Nothing black. Yeah. And in that no thing, I start putting in all the things I desire to be, yeah. have, experience, offer. Yep. All of it. That's it. I feel like listening to you <clears throat> just explain that, Chris, that I could take it further. Mm. Yeah, I feel like I could take that further and I would like to, because I love this exercise. I think it's like a beautiful yeah. way. And I do drift off to sleep at some point. I couldn't tell you when. Can I Is share something a... with that? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm all hyped about this now. This one, my, this is when you realize that you can create and like actually manage your life this way, it's like, it's so freeing. And this mm -hmm. is why I said earlier, DNA is not fixed. Mm -hmm. Your genes are not fixed. Those are all programs to keep you in this loop. But it's, none of it is true. Your genes, your DNA are not fixed. You're the creator. It's all perception. So with that said, this is what you do. You become lucid in your life. You make your life a dream. You have to live in different levels of consciousness while physically here. That's what it means to be the creator. I utilize this body every day, but my consciousness is in a different space interfacing through this body. So for example, um, you know, whenever, before we act, because that, the reason, the reason I thought of the new car thing is because that's how we actually got our new car. But um, before that, we had a, you know, uh, old cars, clunky. But as I was driving it, listening to all the crickets and rattles of the car, I'm imagining myself driving the new car, just being in the new car, pretending. So I could have sat there and like been so afraid of like the brakes going to go out or something. But every thought generates its own frequency. You as the source, ha you have to obey yourself. You can't deny yourself. So if, if you're driving a car physically and it sounds all, all rickety, you have to remember that that is in the past. And this is what I mean. Everything that you're experiencing, even this moment, is in the past. You have to live a second, a minute ahead of yourself. Because that's what you're actually doing. You have to become lucid in your life. So if you want to experience something, 
have fun. Um, if you want to go speak at a big cool conference and you're driving to the store, pretend you're driving to the airport to go to the conference. Just little things like that. Make your life the reality. Don't wait for the reality. Make it the reality and then it'll be the reality, right? Right. What a great example. Because I'm actually speaking in Mexico City in December mm -hmm. at the World Congress UFOlogy event. I have not written my presentation yet, um, but I love that because I'm going to utilize exactly what you're talking about to already have the perfect, I don't want to call it a speech that seems so separating, but I do want to call it, it's definitely a presentation. I have an hour and 20 minutes. I'm mm. so excited to step up as me. I know. For the first time, you know, I've spoken on stage. I've been doing this 16 years. I've spoken on stage about writing books. I've spoken on stage about being interviewed. I've done all the media stuff. It's the first time that God, the universe, mm -hmm. my soul put together mm -hmm. an invitation for me. Come talk about UFOs and shamanism. I'm like, really? <laughs> yes. I'm a heck yes. You know, yeah. and I, feel, I really feel very blessed and guided right now. And so I love what you're saying. I yeah. can feel what you're saying. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like I can yeah. feel the massive possibilities when that's where we allow ourselves to go, direct our consciousness, if you will, right. to right. start setting up our lives, our bodies, everything, situations exactly as we prefer. If we put all our energy into that, imagine, imagine. what could change. Right. And again, this is where the ignorance comes in. And this is why I feel like uh, what I'm sharing is vitally important because we can easily get caught up in like the expansiveness of it all. But we're in a society, earth, humans are never going to change. We don't know how things actually work. So just looking at the shiny lights and, and sparkles is great. But I'm here to bring forth actual change from the inside out to birth something new that humans have not seen and not I don't remember the last time, to be honest. And so in order to do that, you have to become not the co-pilot, not the co-creator, but the creator, which means you have to know how a creator creates, right? So when you're engaging in the, in the physical world, you know, um, doing things, whatever, again, again, you're engaging in the past, right? Because it's already created. It's already crystallized from the ether. It was a thought, and now it's here. So it's in the past. This goes for relationships, you know, arguments, whatever it is, cars, houses. It's in the past because it's physically here now. There's no such thing as living in the present, right? Or, or living in the now, I should say. It's about creating and creating and being a step ahead of yourself, right? So by ignoring the physical things that have already been created, you're now in the now space within and creating from that zero point in real time. And that'll naturally start to outpicture through the sequence of creation in your holographic life. It has no choice but to do that. I've seen it countless. That's literally how I got to this point. That's, that's how things happen. That's how I do things. Amen. So yeah, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> well, my friend, I know, speaking of speaking, you're going to be presenting at the 2024 Conscious Life Expo. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I'm going to have the link in the show notes so folks can go there so they can get their tickets. Tickets aren't on sale yet, but they're going to be on sale really soon. What are you going to be talking about while you're there? What kind of presentation are you doing? Yeah, so I'm going to be getting more into the actual um, details of, of ether physics, of actually how to... Um, construct your life in the way we're talking about. This was just like a very short version. I'm also going to be speaking on uh, ETs and, and communication and what that means for humanity and how humans can actually start to advance in that way. I know we didn't speak too much on that today, but, um, you know, getting into what true interstellar living is really about, right? What it means to be an advanced civilization and not just a civilization looking at the stars and wishful thinking you know, how to actually uh, take steps forward. I'm going to introduce what I call Holistic Society Alliance, where I'm looking for a group of people who want to come together and um, start to organize 
their services and businesses in a holistic manner. That's a whole other thing. I just put up on, on my website today. So those topics, and I'm sure other things will pop up, but that's what I have in store for now. And you're going to have a booth there as well? I don't think I'm going to do a booth. It's just going to be the, I'm going to be doing a panel, the frequency and sound panel. Mm -hmm. So that'll be fun because sound and frequency is my jam mm. also. And then, so no, but, but no booth. Good. Well, I better see you there because I'll be sad if I don't. Yeah, we will definitely connect. I'm, I'm super excited. I'm grateful for the opportunity. I know this is just the beginning and uh, there's so much to share. And yeah, I mean, my, my big dream for humanity is that the beings and the people who are ready, are, who are ready actually takes, take that step forward as a species and become responsible. Become responsible for your life. Stop blaming it on the aliens and stop blaming it on just be the best being you can be start from there meet others who are doing the same technology always follows that's that's how it goes you're psychic i was going to ask you what do you next dare to dream <laughs> what are your future <laughs> dreams and goals and and there yeah. you have it and that's a very that's a beautiful blessing yeah for all of us to take responsibility because as we do for ourselves so within so without right and then right what we get to experience here, you know, include that in your 0 0.2. I think that's super important. Where do you want to live? What do you want this all to look like? Yeah. Yeah, true. And, and there's, there's no one to blame. Like, I just want to say this, like, there's no one to blame. You know, you, you can't, we cannot continue to, to point the finger. You know, we are all creative beings, whether you're conscious of it, uh, of it or not. And when people come together, even just 20, 30, 50 people, on something it happens mm. the only reason the world is the way it is covid all this stuff is because humans have fallen asleep to their own creations meaning their own fears from within the government is set up the way it is because that's what people have not faced within themselves that's just a reflection of the collective consciousness that's all it is so to vote for this or that person you're again you're dealing with the past <clears throat> You want to change something you have to change you have to be the change literally like actually be in the frequency mm. create it embody it draw it speak it text about it it'll happen but humans cannot blame aliens they can't blame the government it has to be us who makes who makes this shift happen you know in real time k-r-y-s rael yeah. Such a pleasure to connect with you and have you on the show. And thank you for everything you shared. So interesting and provoking enough. I really hope that everybody out there starts to play with this because mm -hmm. this is the pond to play with. And that pond becomes a giant ocean, really, right. of goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So much more to explore. I mean, the ether is, is it's eternal. You know, I only touched on specific things, but yeah. Um, thank you, Debbie, so much with the eye, everything that you've done for bringing this forward, for letting me be a speaker on here and for, you know, continuing the great work. It's, it's profound. So thank you, honestly. Yeah. And so I know people can go to republicofeternalnations.org. Is mm -hmm. there any other place people can find you? Yeah. So Cosmic Frequency on Instagram. Um, I spelled frequency wrong. I thought <laughs> it's a whole other story, but Cosmic Frequency is a good spot. And then the website uh, is probably the number one just to see my different services. I do one-on-one. -on -one. I do telepathy, uh, telepathy training, remote viewing, um, all kinds of energy work, sound healings, um, help you connect with your star family, definitely help you set up your PMA, your private members association, which is going to be vitally important. I need people like you, Debbie, to get on board with that, honestly. <laughs> because I need to get on board with the PMA. Yeah, because this is short and sweet. Do I have 30 seconds to share why about that? Please, I because I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah. So in short, like, you know, most of us are taught how to do LLCs, nonprofits, and 501s or 508s. All my businesses are run through a um, PMA or a temple. So I don't have a traditional system design thing. I haven't I haven't registered anything that I do with the with the system. And how I see it is that um, I want to do services and uh, exchange goods with people like you and others who are on the same wavelength. So as long as like, you know, the government is involved in our work, we don't have full autonomy. 
So a PMA is private members association where you set up your own stuff with the members of your organization and no third party can influence. So that goes for taxes, all the stuff. So yeah, um, it's deep. And this is a big part of my work and it's a part of the Holistic Society Alliance. So. Huge, okay. So I know in the medicine world, meaning plant medicine world, that that mm -hmm. is really big, this temple. Mm -hmm. This is how they operate, right? And it's so brilliant. And when you talk about PMA, is that something you do? You set up for people yourself? It's part of one of your services or you just point us in that direction and where to oh, go? It's, it's, it's something I help, I help guide people through. Um, I'm working with two people right now. I've set up a, a bunch in the past, but yeah, so either a PMA or a temple or kind of like a hybrid um, of the two. And, and again, this is vital. This is actually might be one of the most important things we talk about because this is how I see humans move forward. We have to become free within ourselves and then within our business dealings. We have to stop depending on the system and, and asking for permission. If you are a being who is here to bring forth the good word for people, then you gotta operate in the spirit, in, in the source, in, in the ether, right? That's why there's a difference between man-made law and spiritual law, oreta, is spiritual law, which means aura or, or light's law or God's law, right? All this other stuff we've been doing is set up for people who don't know who they are, who need other people to tell them how to operate. As a being who knows itself or their self, I choose, others choose to operate where we call our own shots and we operate with people who are also doing the same thing. It's completely legal too. And it's, it's not like, it's a whole thing. The system knows <laughs> what a PMA is because most of you are doing business with PMAs already. Costco's a PMA. Um, the Bar Association is a PMA. Most of you are already involved in PMA, so you might as well set up your own and start to organize yourself with others who are doing the same so we can actually do the things we're here to do. You know? That feels so important to me. I'm so grateful you got that in. And I am absolutely looking into that. I am spreading out into some really new arenas. Um, yeah. yeah, the universe is bringing me way more than speaking on yeah. stage in Mexico City. I'm just a yes right now as an ambassador for a lot yeah. of things. And so that is brilliant. And you know what, in the timing to hear that is perfect in this project where I'm interviewing these loving, benevolent extraterrestrials, uh, they have made it very clear that many systems are changing. We can see it. Our government is changing, but they've also been clear money is changing the whole paradigm. Mm -hmm. So in light of that, and then everything you're saying about responsibility of self, of how we offer our services, this feels mm, powerful. We're so right thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, we're right there. Yeah, and bring all your stuff back to center, back to source, and then share it, right? We've all outsourced way too much. It's time to come home. It really is. <laughs> the amazing Chris Rael. Go find out more. He's under Cosmic Frequency on Instagram. His website is republicofeternalnations.org. And I end today's show with this quote from Larry Connor. Regardless of age, you should have no limitations and can do the impossible. You need to know and believe there is a possibility you can do anything. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Next week on the show is author, journalist, TV personality, Nick Pope, who ran the British government's UFO program, leading the media to call him the real Fox Mulder. Nick Pope is recognized as one of the world's leading experts on UFOs, the unexplained, and conspiracy theories. Tell your friends about this show, share it with them. And remember, don't just learn, don't just listen, but take action on the amazing information you learned from Chris today. It's life-changing stuff. Dare to dream and dare to turn your dreams into your reality.